we'll call the roll. I'm gonna, I'm gonna call the meeting into order, the Sacramento Transportation Authority meeting for May 13th, 2021, call it to order and ask that uh, Darrell please call the roll to establish a quorum. Then we'll read into the record, do the Pledge of Allegiance and get right into our agenda. So, Darrell. Desmond. Here. Frost. Guetta. Harris. Here. Kozlowski. Here. Kennedy. Here. Miller. Natoli. Here. Sandoon. Shanir, Serna, Singh Allen, here, Spies, present, Terry, here, Valenzuela, here, and Vang, here, Sandoon, here, and you have a quorum. Okay, very good. Thank you, Darrell. I'm sorry, who was that? Director Miller is here. I got you. Okay, hi, Steve. Okay, uh, with that, then, uh, Darrell, you want to read into the record the uh, announcement? Um, and for those who may want to call in or weigh in on the meeting. Yes. In compliance with directives of the County, State, and Center for Disease Control and Prevention, this meeting is live streamed and closed to in-person public participation. Temporary procedures are subject to change pursuant to guidelines related to social distancing and minimizing person-to-person -person contact. To make a, make a verbal comment at today's meeting, dial 916-875-2500 and follow the prompts to be placed in queue for a specific agenda item or off-agenda matter. When the chair opens public comment for a specific agenda agenda item or off agenda matter, callers will be transferred from the queue into the meeting to make a verbal comment. Written comments are also accepted. Send your email comment to boardclerk at sackcounty.net. Your comment will be routed to the board and filed in the record. This meeting of the Sacramento Transportation Authority is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the local government affairs channel on the Comcast Consolidated Communications and AT&T U-verse cable systems. This meeting is closed captioned and live streamed at metro14live.sacccounty.net. Today's meeting will replay Sunday, May 16th at 2 p.m. on Channel 14. And that concludes my announcement. Okay, thank you, Darrell. Uh, Director Desmond, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, before you start, I want to just thank uh, Vice Chair Valenzuela for chairing last month's meeting. I was unable to be here and heard she did a terrific job, so thank you, Katie, for uh, handling the duties. And um, with that, uh, let me ask the clerk, are there any items to be uh, either dropped or removed from the agenda? I am not showing any items that need to be dropped or removed from the agenda at this oh, time. Okay, and uh, for directors, as we move down the agenda, item nine is gonna be a closed session. We'll be doing a, a call in for those that are on the phone. And uh, then we'll, we will reconvene into open session. So uh, it'll be a little bit uh, back and forth here this afternoon. Um, with that, then we're going to go to our consent calendar. And uh, <clears throat> I'll ask if there's any questions on any of the items. But I have asked that the, excuse me, I went, jumped right over the executive director's report. Serena thought I, for, I, thought I forgot, and forgot her. So we have no comments from the public uh, regarding matters that are not on the agenda. Is that correct? There are no um, comments, public, verbal public comments for item number one at this time. Okay, very good. Then we'll go item number two. And uh, excuse me, now we'll turn to our executive director for her report, Sabrina. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, Chair and Board. Happy May and happy Bike Month. I hope you've all taken the opportunity to spend some time outside on a bike and enjoy our facilities throughout our great county. Last Friday, the authority received four responses to an RFP for a polling consultant. We would be notifying the top qualified firms soon and anticipate bringing a recommendation to the board in June. It's good news that we had a lot of qualified proposers for the polling RFP and I am excited to work with the board approved consultants. However, we have not had such a strong response for a new member of the oversight committee. 
The ITOC is still in search of a new voting member with the departure of one of its committee members. If you know a good candidate, please direct them to the STA or ITOC websites for an application information. We can hopefully get this important position filled soon. Later in the, in, in the agenda, our CFO Tim Jones will be bringing together forward a draft 2021 budget for you to hear today. As part of those efforts, the authority hired Economic and Planning Systems Incorporated, EPS, to develop revenue projections and analyze the current list of land use categories for the Sacramento County-wide Transportation Mitigation Fee Program, or SCTMFP. EPS is anticipating presenting to the board in June their other findings. Additionally, the authority has a request for bids out for a pre-qualified pool of bidders for the freeway service patrol contract on Highway 50 between the Sacramento County Yolo Lines and Scott Road. Proposals are due May 24th and staff will request contract authorization at the June board meeting based upon the lowest qualified bid response. And Chair, that serves as the conclusion of my executive director's report. Okay, thank you, Sabrina. Any uh, member have any questions or comments about anything that's on the uh, executive director's report? Director Tony? Yes. So this is Director Stern. I just want to uh, let uh, the board and the clerk and our uh, ED know that I am going to meet. Good. Thank you, Phil, and uh, glad you're able to join us as well. Okay, so any hands up, Darrell? No hands up for Sabrina's report? No, I do not see any hand raises at this time. All right, very good. Then we'll, we'll move on. Thank you for the update on those items. Uh, we have consent items uh, three through six, and um, uh, just prior to me, I, I asked that we uh, pull six off just for a brief presentation. We can still leave it on the consent calendar. If there's no objections, I thought it might be helpful to have uh, Mr. Jones, our finance person, to um, uh, just talk briefly about the STA budget. I know we have some new members that have been seated here in, in recent months, and it might be um, good beyond what was in writing for Tim to have an opportunity to uh, uh, present briefly, but also take any questions, and then we can come back to the consent calendar if there's any other questions on any items that are on the agenda. So with that, I'll uh, call item six, which is introduction of the draft STA budget for fiscal year 2021-2022, and then obviously we'll continue to the next meeting when we're um, concluded with this item. So, Tim? Are we on? Okay. You go, Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board. It is my pleasure today to bring to you the draft of STA's fiscal year 2021-22 budget. And this budget today reflects a multi-month effort uh, in collaboration with uh, our internal staff and with our program partners. And I, want, I, I would like to provide a little context to the document as a whole this year. Uh, next month will mark my fifth year with the authority and um, I've realized um, in particular with this document that I believe that this best represents a full collaboration of our program partners in particular with the CIP program. As many of you know, and I know some of you are newer to the board, we went through quite an exercise uh, last year to identify targeted allocations for what funds remain for the CIP program, which is a very challenging uh, long-term effort that resulted in board action in October and under those those guidelines those targeted allocations subsequent to that uh, staff were faced with uh, and the executive director were faced with working with our program partners in the in particular the CIP to identify funding for their projects uh, based on limited resources which took a lot of effort on all of our parts to establish uh, a consensus on a program that we can live with. And uh, I am really um, uh, thankful for all the effort of those people that participated in those negotiations and this budget here is a reflection of those today. The other um, uh, caveat that I'd like to um, share with you about this budget and something, uh, a, a trend that you're gonna see more so uh, beginning this year and then the years to come is the authority early on issued a lot of debt, uh, several hundred million dollars in debt, and that debt was used to advance our capital program, which we have done effectively, but that money is now gone. That money is extinguished and we are operating on a cash basis now called PAYGO. And so we're now dependent on the development fees and the sales tax revenue 
to fund these projects. So what you're going to notice in, in the budget this year in particular is a fairly significant drop in the fund balance for the authority. Um, and that uh, in itself is, is maybe on the one hand um, concerning, but in our case, all of the general fund money, with exception of some FSP money and a little bit of SAFSA money, is money for the, for the capital program. So in the fund balance being reduced significantly as it was this year, that's a clear indication that our program partners are putting money into construction of projects throughout the region. And that's a good thing. We want that to happen. So you're going to see more of that in the years to come where we're going to be running a much finer line on our fund balance because we're trying to get as many dollars into the hands of our program partners as we can so that they construct projects throughout the region. So that's a little context for this budget. So I think it represents a really realistic picture for the authority in this coming year. And I've identified many of the highlights in the staff report, but just as a, as a general compact, uh, uh, comment, the revenues for the authority, in particular the sales tax revenues, are very strong. We had projected $133 million, um, in revenues for this fiscal year, fiscal year 2021. Uh, and we had done so pre-COVID, and we made the decision internally uh, by in, in sort of monitoring uh, the inflows of revenues and such to, to not change that, that revenue projection. And as it turns out, come February this year, when we updated our revenue projections, uh, working with our consultant Avenue Insights, we're now anticipating $136 million. But I can tell you, uh, as I stand here today, subsequent to February and, and monitoring revenues as they come in month by month, I see a very strong possibility that we're going to end this fiscal year at $140 million. So all of that is good news. Um, we, uh, we may have, uh, it, it sounded like we had overpromised last year when we uh, 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 chose $133 million sort of uh, estimation, but as it turns out, we've under promised we're going to over deliver this year on on our program so that's good news on the on the, the sales tax side and on the expenditure side the capital program is the big is the uh, uh, the big draw on our on our fund balance but in addition to that 80 percent of every sales tax dollar is passed through directly to our program partners that are part of the ongoing program so eight out of uh, 80 cents out of every dollar is being passed through on a monthly basis going into uh, our local, uh, our three local programs, the um, PEDS and traffic safety and road maintenance and that sort of thing. So, so all told, the, the uh, authority is in very good financial condition. We monitor the cash flows uh, regularly and uh, with, along with our program partners to ensure that funding is available when and where needed. And uh, I stand before you today confident that this budget is going to accomplish all that we have set out to do. And if something changes that's out of our control, we will come back and we will update you on that. So a lot of the details are in the staff report, but I think that context is helpful for the Good. For well, you thank, all. thank you, yep. Tim, so much for your presentation. Let me turn to members of the authority then. Are there any questions regarding the uh, budget uh, presentation uh, or any comments? I do not see any hand raises at this time. Okay. Well, very good. This will be back then. So we approve it on consent. Be back to us next next month for adoption. So all right. Thanks again, Tim. Appreciate all your work that goes into this and uh, in bringing this to the board and to the community. You are welcome. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Then we'll go back to the consent calendar uh, items uh, three through six. Do we have any uh, public comments or any callers or any of those items? There are no verbal comments at this time for items three to six. All right, then um, I would uh, entertain a motion if there are no questions or comments and if no one wishes to pull any other item off of the consent calendar. Okay. Oh. Second, Terry. Darrell, did you get it? I'm, I'm sorry, who was the first? I uh, Harris. Oh. Okay. Harris, and then I have Terry for the second. Yep. Okay. Desmond? Aye. Frost? Aye. Geta? Harris? Aye. Kozlowski? Yes. Kennedy? Aye. 
Miller? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Sandun? Aye. Shanir? Serna? Aye. Singh Allen? Aye. Spies? Aye. Terry? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. In vain? Yes. And your motion carries with member Guetta and Chenier being absent. Okay, very good. Thank you for that. Then we'll go into um, some more separate matters. Uh, first item then in that calendar is uh, item seven, which is the consideration for the release of requests for proposals. And we'll turn to our executive director. Thank you, Chair. As I have stated in previous executive director's reports, transportation, the mode, frequency, equity, and use, along with its funding, has finally become part of the national conversation. For the first time in many years, how projects are funded and what types of projects should be constructed are part of conversations in everyday lives, not just from those who have devoted their careers to the safe, accessible, and efficient transportation networks. As, uh, currently, as of last month, traffic is back, currently at 91% of pre-pandemic levels. The public is once again traveling and determining how and when they will do so in, through, and to Sacramento County. Vehicular traffic is up, transit ridership is increasing, and walking and biking are proving to be better long-term options for some. For many, this is the first time in over a year they've considered travel as part of their daily life. There is also proposed federal legislation around a large funding package for transportation infrastructure. While we do not know what the final package will look like, nor will, when it will go into effect, there appears to be strong support for increased infrastructure funding. I, for one, am excited for the conversations. As someone who has spent nearly two decades in transportation, I think it's important to talk frequently about the successes, needs, modes, technology, and funding with the public. For everyone is impacted by the transportation network, and it is paramount that there are frequent dialogues between agencies and the traveling public. People generally only think about transportation when it is ineffective in their lives or when they're asked to respond to, um, on a particular project. But with all these conversations in the ether, I think it's paramount that the authority seizes upon the opportunity to conduct some outreach. I want to focus the dialogue to, with the public on two things. First of all, the success stories of Measure A. What projects and programs are in existence because the voters of Sacramento County vo voted to approve the measure in 2004? I want to share with them what revenue has been generated to date and how our partner agencies were able to use that local funding to leverage state and federal funds and what the return on investment has been. As part of the dialogue, I want to share with them the funds our partner agencies are eligible, eligible to pursue simply because we have a local funding source. Programs that neighboring counties do not have access to because they don't have a local transportation measure. Secondly, as there is currently a national dialogue happening around funding, I want to inform and educate the public on the importance of local funding. As the federal package is eventually adopted and signed into law, we can explain how our partner agencies would be eligible to receive or pursue new funding sources and any outlying needs as well. STA is in a unique position to have a county-wide mode agnostic perspective that addresses the needs of all citizens. The authority will be engaging in the public already for later this summer to conduct public surveys to gauge the potential appetite for another funding measure. I think it's important to engage with the public as a whole at the same time on the successes of Measure A. The best engagement with the public on both the Measure A and the benefits of a local funding source, staff recommends issuing an RFP to hire a public outreach consultant to develop a strategy for engaging with the public, working with our partner agencies to capitalize on their outreach efforts, and to complement our own outreach. Additionally, the consultant will develop a communication strategy on the importance of a local funding source. The solicitation will request services from late June through October and run concurrently with the contract for public, sur uh, public survey um, consultants. Staff anticipates that by October, the board will have the information before them to determine if the authority will move forward with a future expenditure plan. The budget for the solicitation is $28,000, and that will include strategy, outreach, and media buys. And that concludes my staff report. <laughs> okay, thanks, Sabrina. So, directors, any questions regarding the staff report? Recommendation? I don't see any hand raises at this time. Okay. Um, any member of the public? There are no verbal public comments for item number seven. 
Okay, if there's no questions in um, uh, and no further comments, then a uh, motion would be in order. I'll move approval. Moved by Desmond. We have a second? Second by Harris. Okay, all right. With that, please call the roll. Desmond? Aye. Frost? Aye. Guetta? Harris? Aye. Kozlowski? Yes. Kennedy? Aye. Miller? Aye. Natoli? Aye. Sandu? Aye. Chenier? Serna? Aye. Singh Allen? Aye. Spies? Aye. Terry? Aye. Valenzuela? Yes. And Vang? Yes. And your motion carries with members um, Geta and Chenier being absent. Okay, very good. All right, moving right down the agenda, then we <clears throat> come to item eight. We have a uh, need to talk about um, rescheduling the June meeting, so I'll turn to our executive director. The item is to consider changing the meeting date for the June STA meeting, so Sabrina. Yes, thank you, Chair. So as currently scheduled, the next board meeting will um, is on June 10th. However, the state conflicts with the county supervisor budget hearings, and there was a request to either move or cancel the meeting. However, in June, and, uh, staff anticipates bringing before the board for approval the final 21-22 budget, a presentation of our updated SCTMFP projections and land use categories, and contract approval for the public survey consultant, and as just approved, the contract approval for the public outreach consultant. Therefore, staff is requesting that we move the June board meeting instead of canceling. Proposed dates include June 3rd, Thursday, June 3rd at 1.30 p.m. and Thursday, June 17th at 1.30 p.m. Okay, and I understand this meeting would not probably be any longer than an hour, so. Correct, we anticipate it being an hour max, yes. Okay, all right. So I don't know if people are prepared to uh, look to their calendars today. Um, June 3rd would be a little tight on some of the budget information, but um, I trust we can make that work if that's best for uh, directors uh, to assure we have a quorum on e either one of those dates. So, Chair, um, if it is June 3rd, there is a potential that the updated STMFP uh, projections will need to be postponed until the August meeting. Okay. So, there is one. Sorry, are June 3rd at what time? 1.30. 1.30. And then what was the other option? June 17th at 1.30. And there's one hand raised by Supervisor Frost. Okay. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be available, but we can probably send an alternate on the 17th. The third would be fine. Okay, thanks. Okay, Supervisor I, Frost, go ahead. I, I have a SACOG on the third, but can go on the 17th. I'm sure there's gonna be, everyone's gonna, there'll be a, I, I guess, the secretaries will work it out. Is, is there- 17th works better for me. Okay, yeah, so, so let's just with the commentary, so I heard the first person said the 17th wouldn't work. Darrell? I, I have the impression that STA may have to postpone or it may not be able to pull it together by the third. Is that what I heard? We, we anticipate being able to pull most things together by the third. Um, however, the uh, ST, SCTMFP uh, presentation might be postponed until August. Okay. So, well, let's, let's, let's maybe narrow it down. So the 17th, um, maybe just get some sense amongst folks. I thought I heard somebody say that they didn't think the 17th would work. Was that Mr. Terry? I don't know. Um, How's this? Member Terry, was, did the 17th work for you? I'll be traveling, but so long as we can still call into Zoom, I'm, I'm sure I can find an hour or so. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I, I can make the 17th work. Okay. How's everybody else for the 17th? Any strong objections to the 17th? I know we have SAFECA at three that afternoon for those that are on the SAFECA board, which isn't all the members of this board, but any objections on the 17th at 1.30? We will assure that we won't go any longer than an hour. I do not see any hand raises at this time. Okay. Hearing no serious objections, then um, I'll just, I, I don't we need to have, we need to take action on this, Mr. Burke, or in order to move that? Yes. Okay, all right, so I would entertain a motion that we would, um, unless there's any further conversation, we'd, a motion to move our June STA board meeting to June 17th, Thursday, 
at 1.30 uh, in the afternoon. I move. move. Okay. 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 No okay. second. Okay. I think we had a second. Thanks, Steve. I think Desmond got in before you. <laughs> He's got to speak up. Okay. I'm sorry. I thought Desmond was moved it. Oh, did De Desmond moved it? Kozlowski did. Oh, Kozlowski. Oh, okay. Yeah, Kozlowski got in. Yeah. And then Desmond. All okay. Right. All right. So we got a first, second, and a third. One more. We have a home run. So let's take the roll. Desmond. Aye. Frost. Aye. Guetta. Harris. Aye. Kozlowski. Yes. Kennedy. Aye. Miller. Aye. Natoli. Aye. Sandun. Aye. Chenier. Serna. Aye. Singh Allen. Aye. Spies. Aye. Terry. Aye. Valenzuela. Yes. And Vang. Yes. And your motion carries. Okay. With that, then we move down to our closed session item, and uh, we anticipate um, how long do you think, Mr. Burke? Depends on the conversation. I think I only need about 10 minutes or okay. less to okay. speak. So, so anticipate, so I would think probably 20 minutes would be sufficient time. Again, I know it depends upon um, members, uh, but we're gonna have to come back into closed session. That's the reason I, I come back into open we have session. to come back, yes. Yes, so, okay. So with that, I'm gonna have, Darrell, you read it into the record, but we're gonna, uh, adjourn to closed session. We will reconvene back in open session uh, following this item. There is a call in number that's been uh, sent to folks. If you don't have that, Darrell, you can, I guess, either text or send it to folks uh, um, once again. So go ahead and read the item into the agenda, please. Closed sessions, conference with legal counsel, anticipation and litigation, significant exposure to lit, uh, litigation pursuant to pr paragraph two or three of subdivision D of section 54956.9. Of which code? Government code. Government code, okay, didn't say that, so. <laughs> okay, very good. All right, so we are going to adjourn in a closed session. Uh, if you don't have the number to call in, just raise your hand. Darrell can help navigate you to that. And we will leave this room going into one of the adjacent meeting rooms. And again, we will reconvene this afternoon uh, once we conclude closed session. Okay, we'll call back into open session the uh, May 13th uh, meeting of Sacramento Transportation Authority. And uh, uh, with that, uh, we'll... Um, uh, go to our clerk to establish reestablish a quorum, please. Yes. Desmond? Here. Frost? Frost? Geta? Harris? Kozlowski? Kozlowski? Um, Kennedy. Kennedy. I'm not sure what's happening here. I'm sure that they can hear me, so just give me one moment here. Um, Metro Gable, can you please unmute yourself through the Zoom, please? Okay. We Right now we are establishing a quorum. Um, Member Frost? Here. Harris? Here. Kozlowski? Here. Kennedy? Here. Miller? Here. 
Natoli? Here. Sandoon? Sandoon? Chenier? Serna? Here. Singh Allen? Here. Spies? Spies? Terry? Here. Valenzuela? Here. And Vang? Here. And you have a quorum. Okay, very good. There's uh, nothing to announce out of the closed section. No action was taken, so we'll go to item 10, which is item regarding Sacramento Abandoned Vehicle Service Authority 2020, 2022 extension discussion. And uh, with this, we'll go to Ms. Drago and Ms. Dahl for the presentation. So, Thank you, Chair. For this presentation, I'd like to turn it over to Jennifer Dahl, our specials program, Special Programs Manager. Great. Jennifer, good afternoon. So, oh, oh, okay. Good afternoon, board chair and members. Um, as my executive director just said, my name is Jennifer Dahl, and I am the um, STA Special Programs Manager. Um, among my duties, I oversee the Sacramento Abandoned Vehicle Service Authority, um, also SASFA. And I have a presentation. I don't. Okay, we have PowerPoint then? Yeah. Okay, so if we could just clerk or help call it up just a second here. Metro, can you please put the PowerPoint up for item number 10? Do you have a one well, you can go to the podium and show? Oh, I don't have like the actual print. I will get it to them right now. Just give me okay. one moment. Okay. Appreciate everybody's patience. Just a little bit of technical work here. So we're going to bring the PowerPoint up in just a moment. Just a quick update, it has been sent and they're getting it prepared right now. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, I wanted to kind of start a little bit further back than our actual program for the new members of the board so that they see um, how our program was created. Um, California Vehicle Code sections 22710 and 9250.7 uh, respectively give um, permission to create a service authority for abandoned vehicle abatement within a county and the imposition of a $1 vehicle registration fee. They also detail the collection process of the $1 fee, which is collected by the DMV at the time of registration, registration renewal, and when a renewal becomes delinquent. The DMV then transmits those funds to the state controller, and on a quarterly basis, the state controller sends them to us, the authority. Revenue use um, and distribution. Revenue shall only be used for abatement, removal, and disposal of abandoned, wrecked, dismantled, or inoperable vehicles, including the costs associated with enforcement. The quarterly revenue is distributed to each SASFA member by a two-factor formula. It's 50% relative population of SASFA entities, 
and 50% relative number of vehicle abatements for that quarter. In 1992, the Sacramento County Abandoned Vehicle Authority Program was established, which the creation of the Sacramento Abandoned Vehicle Service Authority, also known as SASFA, is the governing, uh, as the governing board also sits concurrently as the Sacramento Transportation Authority Governing Board. The original members were cities of Alton, Galt, Sacramento, and Sacramento County. In 1999, Folsom joined, 2000 Citrus Heights joined, 2003 Elk Grove joined, and in 2014, Rancho Cordova joined, and Isleton withdrew. There are currently seven members. In the nearly 30 years of the program's existence, the program has generated over $30 million in revenue and abated over 300,000 vehicles. With Sacramento County's steady population growth over the last 10 years, revenues have um, increased 24%, and vehicle abatement has increased 207%. Breaking it down for you, on average, annual program revenue for the last 10 years is just over 1.2 million. Vehicle abatements, on average, for the annual program is at the, for the last 10 years is 10,775. Further breaking it down, the average annual member distribution for the last 10 years of the 1.2 million in revenue broken down by the members, shows the city of Sacramento receiving the largest amount at 45%. Alternatively, the city of Galt receives 2%. The average annual member claim for the last three years is over 2.7 million. Um, a claim is what the SASFA member sends in on a quarterly basis um, that we use to project their quarterly distribution. On average, 48% of an annual member claim is covered by SASFA revenues. If I break that down by member, the City of Citrus Heights claims are covered the most at 67%. The City of Rancho Cordova's claims are covered the least at 29%. That brings us to today. 2022 is going to be the year that the current fee expires. AVA programs are, the, are authorized in 10-year increments. And since the last one was 2012, then we have um, April 2022. Authorities Legal Counsel has advised the SASFA fee qualifies as a tax under California Proposition 26, and therefore its extension will require a public vote with a supermajority or two-thirds adoption threshold. This leads to several options for moving forward with the SASFA program beyond April 2020 for discussion at today's meeting. Staff respectfully requests board direction and or intent on the following. Option one, allow the SASFA program to sunset with no intention to continue. Option two, indicate intent to move forward with consideration of a fee extension with the which direction may include, request staff to contract for polling services to determine the likelihood of passing a fee extension via public vote. Direct staff to coordinate with SASFA members on their ability to cover the costs of funding a tax measure. And or direct staff to coordinate with county election office on reserving a, a ballot date. Or direct staff to join with the Self-Help Counties Coalition and work with legislators on an initiative for legislative change of the AVA program regulations. Lastly, we can continue the item for further discussion at the next board meeting. I would like to note, a board vote today reflecting an intent to move forward does not constitute a formal approval of a SASFA fee extension. Staff would bring that item back to the board at a future date for formal and final approval. In closing, I would like for the board to consider these key points. DMV requires a resolution authorizing the collection of the AVA $1 fee beyond the April 30th, 2020 um, um, end date. The resolution must be submitted to DMV no later than mid-September of 2021. Second, should the current program period sunset at the end of April 2022, 
Reinstating the SASFA program could take at least 12 months to resume upon DMV's request of a board resolution. Additionally, DMV will charge a reinitiation fee of about $31,000. Authority does not have the ability to cover any costs related to preparing and placing a tax measure on the ballot. The logical course for covering these costs would be the SASFA members, as they are the direct beneficiaries of the program revenue. Staff suggests any tax measure costs be allocated among the SASFA members by the same formula used for their quarterly SASFA distribution. And that concludes my presentation. Okay, thank you, Jennifer. So let me go to directors, and I know we're getting long in the meeting here, but obviously important items. So let me ask if there are questions. Uh, you, after having heard and read the um, background here. I have one hand raised by Member Frost. Okay, Member Frost. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I just wanted to, uh, first I wanted to make a comment, and then that would be that I think polling would be, um, give us um, some valuable information as to how the taxpayers feel, and I think um, the RFP that we just voted on, it, it might be, um, I guess, uh, it might save us some money if we, we included it in that uh, same educational effort and did some polling there. Um, I wanted to ask if we put it on the June, it seems like if, it, if first of all, we need to know how much the um, it will cost to put it on the ballot and to manage the election so we know what the distribution would be to the members and the cost to the members so that we can ha make that consideration. But the other question I have is it seems like, if I understand this correctly, that the DMV can only, um, we would have to do a resolution by September and that would be for one year that they would have be collecting that fee and so they could potentially be collecting it beyond, um, you know, the date that it sunsets um, and if it didn't pass, if we did put it on the June election, in the June election and it did not pass, would it be possible for, that would only mean April, May, June, that's a couple of months of fee collection that, um, we could either set aside for a couple months or, you know, for a refund. I mean, how do you manage that? That's a question. Um, is there a way that the DMV can, can be more flexible on that? Or do they just only make those documents once a year? I guess I'm not sure I understand that, how the DMV works with this. Okay, question, Ms. Burke. That's legal. Okay, legal. staff is looking at me. Um, so I, this is Bill Burke, uh, staff counsel. Um, I can't speak to how DMV would handle the timing of this. What I, what I foresee is that if the SAFSA board decides to go forward with a fee extension, um, we could do everything we needed to do administratively in terms of our approvals, um, going to get the necessary approvals from the county and the cities, adopting a resolution so that that part of it would be complete before the end of this year. Um, but then, yes, as soon as you probably go out to election is next spring. My guess is that when this current fee expires next April, it expires and it wouldn't start up again until there's a two thirds supermajority vote um, in favor of the fee extension. Now, I don't know if DMV will, um, how soon after that DMV would start collecting again. I don't know if they would consider it a technical extension or a, or a new fee. Uh, those are kind of details we have to work out, but I, I do think that there's going to be a gap um, from between when the current fee expires to when it's reauthorized through the public vote. That is correct. Um, DMV has advised us that we have to give intent by September, 
and at that time it will expire in April, um, regardless if we, if we continue, if we do not sunset the program. And then as soon, if it were to go out to vote and pass, um, as soon as we have that resolution adopted, um, then we can submit to the DMV and they have expressed it will take 12 months. So there is a minimum, say it passes in June, we know in July, well, it's a minimum of, of April of 22 to July of 23 um, for no collection of fees. So, and as for the for the cost supervisor, we um, have been advised it will cost around a million and a half dollars um, for the polling, the outreach, and to get it on the ballot. So, okay. Any other questions? Mr. Chair. Yeah, I know, Mr. Supervisor Desmond. I would get to you. Just oh, sorry. Uh, Supervisor Frost. Anything else? Otherwise, I have others. Yeah, go ahead. Thank okay. you. Okay, Mr. Desmond. Um, I do have. Uh, okay, hey, Mr. Um, Desmond, in the next. Uh, yes. I'm sorry about that. I didn't know if my request no, you shows up, up here. on the screen. I, I had you pushed up here. <laughs> I apologize. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you. I appreciate this presentation. I, I'm, I mean, this this uh, um, fee I think is incredibly important in Sacramento County, um, as you can tell from the charts. And I appreciate the staff preparing this presentation. There is a growing need for this uh, resource, and the, the claims it looks like from the jurisdictions far outstrip, you know, the resources we have. Um, so just to be clear, uh, Sabrina, so $1.2 million is your estimate for that process? 1.5. I'm sorry, 1.5 yes. million? We, we generate about 1.2 a year in revenue. Generate about 1.2 yeah. million a year, wow. I mean, I, 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 it's, I mean, that's obviously expensive, but I think this is for, and, and what would the term be for? How long would it be for? For a new 10 fee? years. Another new 10 fee? years. It's 10 years, okay. Um, I, yeah, and I, and I agree with that. I suspect DMV won't have a lot of flexibility. We'll just have to deal with that lag. Um, but I, for one, I, I mean, I wish the statute, frankly, wasn't just limited to $1. I, I, I wish jurisdictions could get more for vehicle abatement because it's becoming such a bigger and bigger issue. And I, I've discussed this with the sheriff's parking detail, code enforcement, and the highway patrol. And uh, the cost of vehicle abatement is getting more and more expensive, and the need is growing. Um, so, I, I mean, I definitely think we need to pursue renewing this, uh, this fee. As part of uh, a Jennifer staff report with the recommendation of potentially going to the legislation of, of um, changing the statute, uh, additionally, uh, we talked about seeing if they could raise the fee as, as well to make it more tied with inflation. That's okay. great. I'd support that as well. Thank you. Okay, we have other hands? Yeah, Donald? we have one hand raised by Member Terry. Okay, Donald. Oh, who gave you the estimate of $1.2 million to get it on the ballot? Where is that coming from? Uh, that is working uh, with uh, several consultants who gave the recommendation. They're Could you send me the names? Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. On that, does that include the cost of actually funding the election? Yes. That portion of it. So, and what was it? What was the breakout there? How much was the jurisdictions bear for the cost of an election itself, irrespective of any? I don't have that in front of me. Do you, Jen? The registrar of voters must have given you a number. They, there was a breakout of fees. I didn't. I. I apologize. I did not bring it with okay. me today. Okay. I, I think we have that to Member Terry, but I, I trust others are interested. So if we could have that for, forward, it certainly assuming or presuming we're going to continue this item at least for more discussion. Um, yeah. Thank you. Okay. And I have a hand raised from Member Harris. Okay, Member Harris, Jeff. Please unmute yourself, Harris. Member Harris. Thank you, Chair Natoli. I, I agree with Director Desmond that this is a very important program and we need to move this forward. I wonder whether or not polling is indicated. I think that the voters will adopt it. Irregardless, um, you know, we should reserve a space on the ballot, I believe, and that was potentially part of the direction at this time to set the stage to move forward. Once we get a breakout of the cost of the actual funding of the election, uh, we can make further decisions about how to spread that amongst the agencies, perhaps, or wherever we're going to go with it. But this is a program that I feel we can't let lapse, and we should move forward. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Member Harris. Others? Yes, I have a hand raised from Member Frost. Okay, Member Frost, Sue. Yeah, I, I just want to agree with um, Council Member Harris. Uh, I, I think. If we didn't have such a problem with, um, you know, abandoned vehicles and trash along the roads, it seems like um, we're, we're um, 
it's it is something that is important to the constituents and it seems logical that they would want to continue something that they're already paying anyway I, i'm wishing I, that there wasn't the gap but um to put it on a special election would be even more expensive and so and i wonder i wish i did have the breakdown of the polling versus the cost on the ballot because the polling sometimes seems like it's so expensive does it have to be that expensive um you know, maybe we wish there was more competition with the polling but you know um, i think it's important to continue the program also so we should try to work in that direction as efficiently as possible okay Darrell, other commenters i do not see any other hand raises okay. at this any time. other director want to weigh in at this juncture i know we're getting late on the hour here don't see any other i do hands. not see any other okay, hand no raises other at this time i i would just note that uh it sounds like uh irrespective of what we ultimately choose to do that but in the event that we do go to an election and that we're successful we're going to forego 14 months minimum 14 months of current revenue that we receive so you're going to well I, I trust we'll exhaust whatever will come in by april it's a quarterly distribution so we'll get to, i guess at the last you know maybe the mid part of next year but then there would be at least a full year again presuming that it went to the june ballot was you know was um successful you're gonna have a, a, a whole year so it's about a million and a half dollars uh, under the current scenario about a million and a half worth of revenue that we would be, be for, foregone not recoverable that in addition is, to the correct. cost incurred for getting you to the ballot and, and whatever else is uh, election costs so somewhere in the neighborhood of between foregone revenue and election costs you could be in the neighborhood of three million bucks that is correct okay no, I, I would concur that it's an important program and i think you can look at it as evidenced uh, by what's been accomplished over the you know 30 years of the program and it's you know um it's important to all the member jurisdictions and their code enforcement and certainly dealing with blight and and uh, all the things that come with the ban of vehicles so for today's purposes though there's no deadline that if we you come back with some additional information back on our June, we, but we already promised we only got an hour for next <laughs> for next <laughs> month's meeting um, to then, I guess, uh, seek some further direction. I did hear, remember Harris say that he was interested in trying to secure a, uh, a, a ballot position for next June, but we don't have this as an action item today, Mr. Burke, so we wouldn't be able, could we give that direction if that was a, the um, pleasure of the board or do we need to hold off till a few weeks the the only recommendation that uh, the staff is requesting today is uh, do we allow the program to sunset or do we continue to move forward um, to reinstitute the program so what's well, going to sunset irrespective right it's going to sunset irrespective yes right what they're really asking you is should they not go forward with an extension and what i think we're hearing is the safsa board does want staff to go forward um, and take start taking the steps to do an extension and come back probably in the next month or two um, with potentially an action item to yes to do things like secure a ballot date for next June um, and whatever else is necessary to make it official okay you know one note what a thought occurs to me too that uh, maybe working through our state delegation to have the conversation with the Department of Motor Vehicles that whether it be the ability recognizing that it's going to expire in April so there's not going to be a resolution that we're going to be bringing forward but that and I think uh, Director Frost said this that certainly proximity to the election obviously the election has to be certified and, and so forth whether it be the ability to suspend and not have to pay another thirty-one thousand dollars to dmv and wait another year now if they're hard and fast and they got all the code sections behind them says that's what it takes and so sorry but i think a county that houses the state capital and as important as this is the communities and if we're going to muster the effort to you know take this to the people of this county if that's what we only choose to do and we're successful in that then i would hope that we could maybe get some cooperation to look at you know addressing this in a fashion that would be um as i said maybe they could suspend it for 
you know, for a few months and, you know, have some avoided costs, but allow us to, to start up more quickly. But it doesn't seem reasonable uh, to me that, you know, particularly if they give you the April date and we don't do an election till June and we get it certified by August and then you have to wait until next August. I mean, th those dates don't, con you know, they don't fit any particular pattern. So I guess I would ask, and again, maybe Sabrina, you could do some work behind this, uh, at least get some information. And maybe, again, local electors could talk with folks, assuming we had some talking points and maybe approach DMV officials to see if there's a way to uh, streamline that a bit so that we wouldn't have all that foregone revenue um, in the event that we're successful at the ballot next, next, next year. So. Yes, sir. I will. Okay. All right. Any other members then? If not, then um, I hear we'll put this back on our agenda and for coming back uh, within the month. So on June 17th, we'll have this and we'll have some uh, potential action items or direction around this at the June meeting. I do not see any hand raises at this time and there are also no verbal public comment at this time. Okay, all right. So, all right, there's nothing further than there's no no action uh, necessary. Um, I guess you got general direction on this, is that? There yeah. is a request for a, for a vote to approve moving forward. Well, I think you got general direction. Do we need to? Is that all the direction? Well, we yeah, it, it's, it's listed in the agenda as an action item, but I do think that staff has the direction. I haven't heard anyone uh, on the board ask to not go forward. So we don't have to take a, an official action because nothing official is being done. What I'm hearing is a uh, direction for staff to come back in the next month or maybe in July with, I think I heard three things. One is a cost breakdown for a vote. You know, what is the cost of just getting on the ballot? What's the cost of polling? What's the approximate cost of doing a, uh, I'm gonna call it um, information education effort. Um, Talk to DMV, see what they can do in terms of avoiding a one-year gap mm -hmm. on uh, on instituting or implementing the fee. Um, so maybe those are two of the things that, that we'll come back with. Okay. So there's no objections. We'll take that as general direction to staff, and uh, I don't think it warrants a motion at this point in time. That's fine. Okay, okay. very good. Okay, thank you. Uh, nothing further then. Just we're down to the... Partner agenda, any board member comments or uh, announcements? Uh, any hands raised? I do not see any hand raises at this time. Okay, well thanks everybody for your patience, uh, for the call-ins and recall-ins, thanks to our clerk and to our staff. Uh, we'll return here uh, at 1.30 on June 17th with a continuation of the last item and some and follow on to other items. So if nothing further to come before this body, then we'll stand in adjournment. Thank you. Thank you.